This is uh, Mike Karopian. Uh, we're setting up uh, the 3D Pantograph machine. This is uh, video number three in uh, chronological order. Uh, we've already adjusted our tables, uh, leveled them, and adjusted them to the uh, exact um, measurement we needed. Uh, at this point, it's a little over 70 inches. And we've then gone to the boom, and every uh, pivot, uh, the two pivots, we'll call this table, we'll call this one here uh, table two and table one. Um, ball pivot, uh, I'm sorry, pointing uh, pivot would be two and pointing number one. And further back on the boom, you'll notice the ball assembly, which sits on top of the ball. And this is the measurement we need now, given our table distance, is uh, the distance between table number one and the ball pivot. We adjust it on the boom, the exact measurement using trammel points, and we've come as close as we can um, to line up the table, the center of table one, right where about that nail is, and uh, the ball pivot. But in order to fine tune it, because there's really no uh, trammel points for me on, on this table, or the, uh, with the top of it this way. We have to line up everything and we have to make sure that the measurement between table one in the ball and pointer number one in the ball are the exact same. So what we've done is we've got it as close as we can and to help determine to uh, make it a little easier, we have uh, the ball pivot sitting on a um, surface gauge which can adjust, fine tune. So I'm by myself today, so what I did was I, I drive a nail into the um, table number one and I come over to table number two and I locate by feel the nail with ta uh, pointer number one. And that brings me to, there it is, that brings me to a location on the table, as you can see there. And I've already done this, I've done it about three times and it came pretty close. Each time I do this, I do it, well I do it four times. The reason why is I want to zero in the centers of the table with the ball. So I'm going to turn the table, I mark the, the one point that I made and then come back, bring the point down, line it up with the nail over there, and place my point down. And it did come over, it should be right about there. Once I get it on there, you got a feel for the nail, and that's my second stop. I mark that, I turn the table two more times. One more time, I do another check. At some point, I'll get a helper in here and I can make it a little easier for myself and videotape us doing it. So that's, I'm over here. There we go. So that's lining up. The pointer on the table over there is lying right on that nail, the center of that nail. There we go. can barely get them in here. Okay, I mark that. And I go to the fourth way, okay? So as you can see, let's say I started off with this one, and you can see the distance um, of the four points. That was my first test. And then I crossed them, two, I, I, I marked one and uh, one and three, and, or yeah, one and three, and two and four, and came up with a center. I did another one put the nail uh, on table one in a different location and I came up with a little closer and then finally this particular where are we my lens isn't there we go I finally did this one now you'll see that if you you, you could get closer probably but at this point it's the size of an eraser or under an eraser size that's that's pretty tight machine you don't really have to go any closer than that 
And uh, since I'm using a nail over there instead of a pin or some help uh, to hold it in place, it, it's, it's gonna, I'm gonna go back and forth if I keep trying. So that's actually a pretty good, that's a perfect um, passable test. That means that the ball pivot and table number one are adjusted at the exact or very close to the exact measurement I need. And that's gonna keep us in, in um, good shape when we start to enlarge or reduce a sculpture. Uh, to, in order to do the test, I'm using um, very pointy um, styluses. There's one like this in pointer number one and num point number two. This get, lets me uh, fine tune the machine. The thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cinch down or tighten up these, these areas and uh, make sure that this doesn't move. Uh, when you're using a pantograph machine, I have a couple kids, they, they know enough not to mess around with the machine. But what happens is you don't want anybody putting stuff on it, uh, messing around with your machine because it can go off uh, if you're not careful. Um, just as closing, uh, I would like to say that I usually keep this, this, uh, this piece of paper and I put on the information that has my uh, readings as far as how, the, how close the machine came in to check. Uh, it also tells me uh, the ratio, what I was doing, because uh, years go by and you forget. So this, this will help me down the line um, uh, just as a reference. And um, I, I keep this usually in a folder. Uh, from here, the, the model I'm going to be enlarging is um, a sculpture of uh, my Daniel Nimham sculpture. And uh, I, uh, I usually don't enlarge pieces larger, like 4.3 or anything. But since this one's pretty small, uh, I thought I'd like to see what it looks like enlarged uh, with the pantograph rather than starting from scratch. Uh, I probably will, uh, I, I'm going to use an um, adjustable armature so that I can adjust proportions. Uh, guaranteed there'll be some kind of uh, proportional things going on in the larger version. So in any case, that's where I'll be next. And uh, putting the armature together, use an aluminum rod, uh, elbow, so that may help in um, people that are still wondering how to make armatures or have any questions about that, feel free to contact me. And uh, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.